Welcome, everybody. I'm Mark Peter Davis, Managing Partner of Interplay. I'm on a mission to help entrepreneurs advance society, and this podcast is definitively part of that effort. Uh, today, we've got Fong back on the show to kind of run through some wisdom. Uh, she is framing out how to get your initial customers if you're launching a B2C product, so B2C business to consumer. Uh, she's going to do another segment covering B2B, initial customer acquisition. Um, this is one of those things where people probably take it for granted. It's like, yeah, how do you walk? You just learn to walk. The reality is that there are some tactics and there are some opportunities to be thoughtful in getting this going. And it's this cold start phenomenon where you're, you know, how do you get a ball rolling when it's standing totally still? It's really hard. Once it starts to roll, it gets a little easier. So this should be a helpful way to figure out how to nudge the business forward and get things started. Enjoy. Hello, Fong. Hey, Mark. How are you? I'm awesome. Yeah? I'm awesome. I feel like everyone on our team has been around the world last couple of weeks. We had folks in uh, Macau, Montana, all over. Scotland. Scotland, right? So it's nice to kind of have the gang back together. Most of those are business trips, but it was a bit of a diaspora for a moment. Yeah, I was following some of the uh, the Macau content on LinkedIn. It looks like uh, they had some of our partners had some uh, great speaking events and uh, seemed really neat. Yeah, Chris, who's also on the pod, as you know, uh, apparently was dropping wisdom at a conference in Macau on asset management. Uh, and apparently was a highly regarded speaker at the event. So oh, who knows? I've got to get my hands on that video. Yeah, me too. I think I need more content to make fun of him about. So <laughs> Next time I'm uh, going to go and heckle. Yeah, that's a good, it's a good excuse to go out. I think three partners <laughs> went to heckle him. That was the only reason. Uh, what do you got for us today? What's, what's in All the All right, works? Mark. Uh, we have a fun topic today. So um, in Interplay's Incubator, we work with a lot of very early stage companies that are pre-revenue and have not gotten their first users yet. So they've built their MVPs and maybe they've done some testing with their internal team and now they're ready for their first customers. So that's what we're going to talk about. When you're ready for your first customers, what kind of customers should you be looking for? And then how do you get them? So specifically today, we're going to talk about B2C businesses. So many of the principles do hold true for B2B, but there's some major differences. So we'll talk about B2B in a future episode. So your ideal first customers, who are they? First, it goes without saying that they should fall into your ideal customer profile. But also keep in mind that these first users could potentially be champions for your product and therefore critical for you to gain that initial traction and spread the good word about your product. But also, as first users, they're going to have to put up with an imperfect product, right? So it's going to be clunky UX, product might break, they're missing features, whatever happens ha is going to happen. So you want to look for people who, one, feel the pain point you're solving very intensely. They're so passionate about the problem that they're willing to forgive the initial shortcomings and can become strong advocates. They're also people who are early adopters, right? They like trying new things. They know what it's like to be an early customer. They like to be part of something new and can, pro and can provide helpful feedback. Ideally, you should already know these people or you should get to know these, these, these customers personally. Can recruit these guys so you can create a relationship with them. That way, you can solicit robust feedback that will really help you iterate on and perfect your product. So now is the time to get out there and get your boots on the ground. So don't just sit behind your desk and um, and kind of do everything digitally. Also, I want to note that ideally at this point, you want to charge your initial customers. So that's counterintuitive, but it's important. If you're able to find people who are passionate about the problem, they're going to be willing to pay for it. And if they're paying for it, they'll give you much more insightful feedback and a better education of whether or not this is a thing. It's easy to love something that's free, right? So now that you know who you're looking for, where do you find them? You should go to them where they already are. If you've done a good job on your ideal customer profile, you should know a lot about your customers, their lifestyle, what they like, what they do. So go to them. Go to them where they are offline, offices or malls, wherever you think they hang out. We once worked with a consumer app that was targeting college students. 
So the team actually set up a table in Washington Square Park, which is basically for those um, who are from here, uh, is the NYU campus. And so they stopped students walking by to tell them about their app and have them download it. We also worked with another safety app that targeted moms. So we had them connect with school parent associations. And then you can also go to your customers where they are online. So ask yourself, where are people who are passionate about this topic congregating online? You know, look at Reddit, Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, user groups, web forums, and join in on the conversations. I think by reading these conversations, you can learn a lot about how customers are already talking about the pain point. And that's going to help you craft your value proposition when you're talking to customers yourself. So then once you're in the conversation, organically tell the groups about your product and, and try to solicit users. And then, of course, you can also leverage your network, friends, family, your professional network is also going to be useful here. Now, on top of these very early initial users, there are also ways you can build your next wave of users. So specifically, you can build a pre-launch community or and or a launch beta program. So a pre-launch community, I think one of the most successful examples here uh, to, to talk about is Harry's. Uh, they before, Harry's is that men's shaving company that started uh, direct to consumer, but is now in retailers. Before they actually launched, they launched a referral program. So you'd go to their website, which wasn't selling anything. You entered your email. They asked you asked you to refer your friends for free products. So if you were referred five fr- friends and they actually signed up, they get uh, that you'd get a free shaving cream. If you get ten. You get free razor blades, 15, a free razor, so on and so forth. By doing this campaign, they got 100,000 emails in one week. And this is even before they started selling one thing. Um, you can also launch a beta program. So, you know, you can create FOMO with exclusive invitations, offer early access to your product to a select group of users in exchange for their feedback. Um, and you can look for, for users on a platform like Product Hunt. Um, so yeah, those are, you know, if you use these strategies and if you're persistent and, you know, you work hard, you're on the ground, you're talking to customers, you can find your first customers, get that early traction and get the flywheel going. I love the thing you're saying about being on the ground. Yeah. Because particularly for the entrepreneurs who are building software, they're thinking very digital. They're thinking about digital experiences, digital acquisition. The on the ground subtext is human contact. And I think one of the challenges we have in getting these feedback loops right is on, you know, the customers don't want to hurt your feelings. If particularly if they're your friends or family, even if you're a stranger, they're not going to tell you it sucks when, or this button's broken or, you know, they might give you little passive aggressive comments, but they're not going to lay it down, but they hate it. And there's nothing that makes it more clear how they're feeling about it or what's hard or confusing for them than simply watching them use it, Mm -hmm. right? Just looking over their shoulder while they're clicking around, confused or angry or ambivalent. So powerful to see that. So yeah, you know, getting the the scaling going, lots of tricks. Um, You know, the Harry's example is phenomenal. I mean, think about what their cost uh, per email address was. I'm it's guessing like, it's under under a buck. Each, yeah, like it's nothing, right? But I think and they're getting something. their razors out, which and then people are going to have to like buy more product to to use up those razor. To, yeah, they're getting people to use those razor handles. The, yeah, yeah, brilliant. But there's even more to this. There's just that first 10, 15, 20, 30 people where it's a non-scalable activity. It's not something you can automate. Just looking over someone's shoulder, seeing sitting there quietly, not saying anything while people are fuddling through your product and making mistakes. Um, It's really natural to tell people, no, 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 click here and this is what it's supposed to do and do this. Whenever I do a product test, I just put the app in front of people. They start talking and asking questions, which is easier to ask for questions than to try to, you know, screw around with it and figure it out. Uh, I don't answer. Just sit there quiet and watch them. And usually people figure it out or the product's really bad right? and we need to make changes. So uh, that just wanted to double click on that. Go to them where they are, particularly for that first couple dozen. Just watch that. You'll learn so, so much. Yeah. And if you can't find a community where these people already are, like maybe they're 
there's no natural really like users for for your product and then you're in trouble but they should be pretty pretty easy to find or you're probably the wrong entrepreneur for the business because maybe you're solving something you don't know anything about or exactly you don't anything about the customer um this is a good topic all right i look forward to doing the b2b version of this yeah we'll thank be back you. for that thank you fong all right thanks Thanks for listening, everybody. Another good segment from Fong. We'll catch you next time.